Okay, somehow I made it to the stream only one minute late after sitting in two and a half hours of Boston traffic. So I'm going to consider that we've already won here at Spike Week. I don't even know if I have to do a draft. But I'm feeling good, so you know what? Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Spike Week Football Show. You know, this offseason has had its peaks and valleys of information, mostly peaks. We're in one of those valleys right before these mini camps get going and stuff. And I wanted to do this one solo today for multiple reasons, but I wanted to talk a little bit about getting unique in these drafts that we're doing. And when I say that, I don't mean that we need to get like crazy all the time. I think there's certain areas that you can attack and get unique. And we're going to try to do some in this best ball mania. One of the things I was looking at yesterday and I put a tweet out is I want you to think about this team. I want you to think if you started Javante Williams, Mike Evans and AJ Brown, would you consider that a reasonable start? Like for your first three picks, these are your pillars for your team. And I'm going off of the fact that you'd be drafting from like the middle of the first round, say like the eight or nine spot, something like that. If you walked away with Javante Williams, AJ Brown, Mike Evans, do you feel like that's a poor start? Well, over on DraftKings, we I draft on multiple sites. Those are all third rounders. Right at, at the moment, Mike Evans might be a late second, but A.J. Brown, Javante Williams, Mike Evans, they're all like late second to early thirds. And I'm going to attempt to build that team at some point where I get those three guys in the next few days because I feel like that's a great start for a team. And how many people are going to have that build? Because they're going to be like, well, I don't have to get Javante Williams to the third. I don't have to get Mike Evans to late second. I don't have to get A.J. Brown to the third, which is true. But how many people are going to have those three currently? Things change. We know that things might alter in the next few months. Melvin Gordon goes down in training camp, and Javante shoots back up to the first round. And then the team becomes a little less unique. But it's unique enough that people aren't doing it right now, right? So those are the things I kind of want to think about when we're looking at teams. You don't have to go out of your way to do it on every single pick. But here and there, don't hesitate to scroll down a little bit and see like all right because people people get become slave to the adp it's just fact it's like i heard over that talking about this the other day where like the most common one of the most common constructions was like mccaffrey kelsey and justin jefferson just because that's where the adp fell right you took mccaffrey one when it got back around to you you were staring at i think kelsey and Justin Jefferson. So people were like, well, got to touch those two guys next. Those are the next two guys on the list. Got to take them. So now the pillars of your team are the same pillars as, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred other teams. And your unique players are not, are, are some of the back end guys, which you do want here and there. But we want to draft construction that's a little bit different. And our first four to five picks are our pillars, right? Like, that's the pillars of your team. Your expect your expectations for those players are to be in your lineup on a high level amount of the time. So oh, that's right. Sorry, Connor. It was Waller. Kelsey was a first rounder. I have Kelsey on the brain because of last night making fun of buying four for him. But yes, I mean, but the point stands. The point is it was Waller, it was Jefferson, and it was McCaffrey. So I think looking for ways to get a little more unique. So if you started McCaffrey, then maybe you should have been scrolling a little bit more. Maybe you don't go with that tight end. Maybe you take one of the wide receivers that's a little bit down. You can take Justin Jefferson, but maybe last year, I'm just going to say the name that was in the third round. Maybe you went Allen Robinson. Would it have been good? No, but he would have been sliding down. 
you would have been getting a little bit of a different construction. So I didn't want to pick a guy that gave us 2020 hindsight, right? So let's get a draft started. Let me uh, share my screen here. And let's jump into Best Ball Mania too. And I think it's more important, like if you're looking, if you're looking to do this from the first round, I'm probably not going to be doing it from the, of course we get one of them, but from the one through five spot, I think you should be grabbing, you know, Taylor Cup, McCaffrey, Jefferson, Chase. I think when you get to the sixth spot is where you can start to look to do some of those things. You can get a little weird, but you're, you're so hard pressed to get these guys in the top five. They're pretty much consistently, you know, they might shift a little bit, but those top five guys right now, you can only get them in the top five for most drafts. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at here. So like for this draft, we're not going to start weird. We're probably going to grab McCaffrey, maybe cup. We'll see what we want to do. Um, but that's, that's kind of my thought process going into this. So we did fill pretty fast. We might've been the last person to get in there. We're drafting from the two spot. I was hoping to pull like the eight, the seven or the eight. I felt that would have been the best to get real weird real quick, but well, we got to adjust to what we get. So that's what we'll be looking at. So another thing I think about getting weird is a, a spot that I'm a little more comfortable to do it a lot is the wide receiver spot, right? So I think the good way to do this is we'll just start setting that up by taking McCaffrey right away. Get that anchor RB. We can um, probably just start hammering wide receivers. And we'll see what falls to us, and we'll make some decisions at that point. What are you guys seeing? Is there guys that you're like going out of your way to draft a little early? Uh, for me, it's AJ Brown. I just think, I think AJ Brown in the third round is like crazy value right now. So I don't mind taking him in the second if it's for the reasons, like I said, like if I'm trying to get Brown Evans, because like I'm like, who else is going to have Brown Evans right now? Not many people. So when I'm trying to do something like that, and those are the guys I keep bringing up, but there's a few others in that category. That I that I look to do that. So, and you can do it later in the draft too. You don't you don't have to stick. Like we want to play ADP because we're trying to get value, 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 value. We're always talking about value and like yeah, we want to get the most bang for our buck. But what's been the big topic of discussion this last week? Everyone's talking about game stacking week seventeen, somewhat game stacking week sixteen, but seventeen is all everybody's talking about. It's like, how can I stack 17? How can I stack week 17? And I still think we're going to be at the forefront of that. Like when the casual drafters start coming in, maybe late July, definitely August, that's not going to be on their brain. Their brain is just, you know, who do I like the best? You know, that's the caveman theory guy. But if all these good players are drafting, you saw how many people are already in best ball mania. And we have to assume that most of them are sharp players. Those week 17 stacks are going to be really overly done, in my opinion. So I still want to do it. I still want to stack week 17. I still want to stack week 16. But I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. And I'm trying to make sure I don't do that with a lot of my teams now, not just with the week 17 stacks, but even – um team stacks like trying to get a stack for your quarterback if it doesn't make sense so my example of that i took i took kyler murray kyler murray a couple weeks ago maybe a week ago and my game plan was to stack him with a falling deandre hopkins and as i was watching the draft Hopkins goes around ahead of where he had been going for the last week or so. So obviously Hollywood Brown's already gone. I think I had already grabbed one, maybe two tight. I had already grabbed one tight end, not two. So I wasn't super high on Ertz. And I think he even went earlier than expected in that draft. So at that point, Rondell Moore ends up going two rounds earlier for his ADP as well. So now I'm like, okay, who's left to stack with them? And it's only A.J. Green. 
And I don't want to reach on AJ Green. So I'm letting AJ Green fall. And when it gets to the point that I have to select him, it was either take AJ Green or Julio Jones. Those were like the two viable wide receivers at that point because one was just a stack for my quarterback. And I believe in Julio Jones to have a good year, not a great year, but a good year based on where we're drafting him at right now. So I took Julio and I left Kyler naked because I think I'm going to get better production from Julio Jones than I will AJ Green. Throughout the year on a game to game basis, I just think he's a better play. So I decided to bite bite the bullet and just go naked Kyler on the team. It's not my favorite thing to do. It's not what I'm setting out to do, but I'm not going to become so beholden to the fact that I have to stack my quarterback to hurt my team. All right, so now we're coming up, um, and I actually like the way this team's setting up because we might get two of the three guys we were talking about, right? There's definitely a possibility on that. So let's. So Javante Williams goes. I am going to take. Hmm, let's take Evans. Let's take Evans and we'll see what happens here. Let's just start scrolling down and see what we see. So I think there becomes some bigger tier breaks here. So AJ Brown goes, T Higgins goes. Um, I think the way to go here is Barkley. Uh, let's get weird. Let's take Allen. No, let's just take Barkley. Let's just do Barkley. Oh, no. Oh, no. And we get Fournette Evans. And that is just disaster for me. And that's why you always cue your guys, right? Because of that. So now this draft. Ugh. All right. So not a good start. Not the start. Well, not the start I wanted. We got McCaffrey. We got Fournette. We got Mike Evans. So not a complete disaster, but I really don't like having Fournette and Evans on the same team, obviously. I was trying to avoid him once I took Evans. Is what it is really alters whatever we're going to do for the draft. And uh, it's just been one of those days, man. Just been one of those days. Uncle Andy says Tampa Bay stack. Yeah. I mean, we might be, <laughs> we might be onslaughting here. Ugh. All right. We'll get over it. Um, I like Josh Allen without Stefan Diggs on occasion, because I think people that take Diggs are going out of their way to take Allen. That always happens to you, DKB. That's never happened to me. I've never had that error come up in the middle of a draft like that. But, I mean, also my fault. Like I said, I should be queuing my guys. Just a complete brain lapse on my part. So, we'll see how it shakes out. Just want to take care of some housekeeping right now as well. Um, really starting to pick up on some of the content right now on Spike Week. Some really fun stuff over the weekend. I honestly cannot wait for you guys to see this video. I think it's going to come out on Friday. I think that's what we're looking at. Um, so I'm thinking Friday you're going to see it. If not, it will be this weekend. But I think everyone's really going to like it. And I want to talk a little bit more about what the Spike Week Royal Rumble is going to be. So we've re released the one video. Um, hard to manage the queue and stream at the same time, says Connor. Yeah, sometimes, but I'm I'm better than that. I feel as though I'm better than that. But like I said, I was rushing home, and that's why I didn't even bring a guest on tonight because I knew tonight was going to be a little tougher time constraint wise for me. Um, so the spike week Royal rumble, there's going to be 12 people in it. The only two people that are announced right now are myself and buying for, and it is going to have money on it. We're not concerned. The money's not the concern here. 
there is a championship belt that is involved. The winner is going to get the Spike Week championship belt, which I will be revealing either this weekend or next week. And it's going to be it's going to be a league that we track for the year. So you're going to know pretty much everybody that's in this Spike Week Royal Rumble. And we're going to track it probably on a week-to-week basis to see who's doing what. And we're going to name a champion at the end. And we're going to have a lot of fun with it. And you'll definitely see what I mean as more stuff comes out. Um, we are coming back up on the clock. We got Waller falling to the end of the fourth right now. That's pretty interesting. We've got Kittle. We got McLaurin. I don't know, guys. Like Waller right there at the end of the fourth seems like an absolute steal, right? Just kind of scrolling to see what we have. We're not getting as unique as I wanted to on this build at all. Um, but I feel like we have to take Waller. Um, just feels like a steal at the end of the fourth. I mean, Kittle going practically in the beginning of the fifth round is a steal as well. And I think we're going to do it. I think we're just going to. Do we want to onslaught Tampa? Hmm. Do we want to onslaught Tampa? Let's let's go Sutton. I wanted to do it. <clears throat> Felt like the thing to do, but let's go with Cortland Sutton. And let's see what kind of roster we can build here with Sutton. We can still onslaught Tampa with another pick. There's a few guys that we can get a little bit later other than Chris Godwin. Uncle Andy says, yeah, I got to go. Well, I mean, it's just crazy that he fell that far, right? DKB, I just started drafting, having the drafting on my phone and have the board open on my PC for backup. Yeah, I mean, I like drafting on the phone too. Again, streaming kind of impedes that. I want to take a look at the board. <coughs> By the way, can you guys see it? Should I uh, scroll in just a tad here? Take a look at the board. For a second, let's scroll down. So yeah, but Spike Week, we got a lot of. He's got Eric's got the tools getting ready to come out. I've gotten to take a look at the tools that we're going to be doing to track your best ball teams and get you some stuff on there. Like I can't say much about it, but those are phenomenal. Um. Do you, do you guys, sorry, I was getting really confused by someone saying screw Waller. I'm like, I mean, he's not my favorite, but you know, fifth round Waller. <laughs> and then he called me daddy. So we're all good pangs. Thanks for jumping in the chat. So other than just the discord, which I lurk in a lot, I'm constantly getting information and just not always joining in the chat for different reasons. Sometimes I want to see how a conversation is going to play out. I want to see two people's points of views without giving my input just to see what their basis is for their arguments. And you can find that a lot in the strategy talk where people are constantly giving great analysis. And I think I've made this point when we had Eagles on not when you play poker, right? And I'll always go back to poker you don't need to necessarily agree with the way your opponent's playing. But understanding what they're thinking and why they're thinking it can help you tremendously. So I don't like Travis Etienne on record, but I understand the hype behind him, right? I understand why people are trying to drive him up to the fourth and fifth round. And it's like, so how can I use that to my advantage? It's Probably a minuscule advantage, in my opinion, because if, if ETN is goes off the charts, then I'm screwed. But my minuscule advantage is <clears throat> if I'm in a turn situation and I don't like ETN and I bypass them, that allows me to get two of the guys that I want, right? I mean, it's, it's real basic strategy, but just understanding that 
like little microcosm of how to draft and play poker um, is is tremendously valuable. If you know that a player is going to just call you down with top pair every time, you're going to clean up in a, in a poker game, cash or tournament, because that person is just going to pay you off every time. So we're looking to be paid off more regularly than not. So let's see who's in the queue here. Um, I want to go. Let's let's just get our stack. Let's just grab Brady. And then I'm pretty okay with some of the options we got coming behind Brady at the wide receiver spot. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Allergies. Not sure where most of you live, but um, it is allergy season in New England. I washed my car Sunday. I have a black car, and it was green by Sunday night because of all the pollen. And that's when we start to wonder, why do we still live in New England? And that's a great question, Rob. Someday you'll find the answer. So we'll be coming back around here. <clears throat> and we're definitely going wide receiver. I just want to kind of see what other... I think Hopkins is fun as our third because I think we can find... St uh, but I really do love Devonta Smith. We're not holding the Hopkins, are we? Um, Let's go Smith. I think that's... A clear tear break for me is this Hopkins area right here. So that's the other thing is like playing within your tear breaks. And figuring how you want to do that to get unique. We haven't gotten unique at all. And I'm, <laughs> I am not, I am not doing what I wanted to do on this stream. Wait for Robinson. I'm waiting for Robinson is what I meant. Let's go Buffalo. I love the shows. The Buffalo War Pigs. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And luckily, you guys get to hear my smooth voice, other than that clown, Eric Vine, for tonight. He was supposed to jump on a show with me later, and he thought that going to a baseball game was more fun when he could have been talking to me about being unique. And now I'm here alone. So it's fine. We'll be okay. Let's run through our team real quick. <clears throat> we have Tom Brady. We have Christian McCaffrey, Leonard Fournette. We have Evans, Sutton, Devonta Smith, and Darren Waller. <clears throat> we auto-drafted Leonard Fournette. And the funny thing about auto-drafting Leonard Fournette on this team is this is the team. That's the move that makes us get a little more unique to the field. Because Brady, Fournette, Evans... Although people are going to have it, I guarantee people are going to be going out of their way not to have it most of the time, right? So maybe that is how we end up getting a little bit more unique by absolute mistake. And it happens. And I'm losing my voice, which is great because I have three shows to do tonight. So it is what it is. Are any of you guys in this draft right now? Terrence has nice teams thus, thus far. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate this team so far. Peng says digging the wide receiver setup. It's going pretty well. I mean, we didn't get the pick we wanted earlier, but I don't hate the way we're stacking up. And again, I think we are getting a little unique, more unique than I thought we were going to. What are you guys doing with I, – I bring this up every week. But it, I, it's the, to me, I don't hear anyone else talking about it. And it's one of the things I find the most fascinating with these drafts right now is the quarterback position. And just comparative from last year to this year. Because to me, Wilson Stafford becomes a, I guess, yeah, it, it's a clear break for me because I'm not big on Rodgers. So once Stafford goes, like this becomes a tear break. Rodgers, Lance, and then Carr is like that next level of break. And I can't even, I don't know what to do with Deshaun Watson, to be honest. So are you guys just trying to take 
are you guys trying to take just one quarterback early or are you guys trying to grab two quarterbacks before like round eight? Have you guys been flirting with that at all? Have you seen anyone else trying to flirt with that at all? Um, Cause I've been trying to grab, I've been trying to do some builds here where I have two quarterbacks by round seven or eight, just to see how I can shake out with them. Uh, Sammy asks, do you stack for week 17? I, I do, but not every draft. I don't make it a point to do this every, every single draft. Like, it's in my mind. It's one, It's like a tiebreaker. It's a thought process that goes into it. But again, I'm not going out of my way for it. I think, I, I think strictly relying on week 17, I understand the theory behind it. You know, it's, it's a tournament within tournament. You got to beat over 400 people in DFS. We want a game stack, but there's also games where teams win 35 to nothing. And that offense blows up and the other side does nothing, right? I know we're looking for track meet games. So that's kind of that's kind of my thought process on the week 17 thing. It'll be a tiebreaker, it'll be something I look to do, but I'm not going nuts for it. Um <clears throat> so I do like seeing Goddard there. Let's kind of see what we got for our wide receivers going on here. So I personally like MVS here. I want to get some Kansas City exposure. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to take Watson. And we're going to hope to get MVS on the turn here. So we'll get the potential number one in Green Bay. And we'll grab MVS, who... He's my favorite chief wide receiver to draft right now. So taking him, you know, seven spots ahead of ADP, more than fine with doing it. <clears throat> Peng says, one thing I noticed based on how teams have finished short of just off the short of just off the wall rosters, there isn't really a bad way to draft either. I agree. Uh, like, I think that's a valid point, but the thing about that is you have to know how to draft within your structure that you're trying to draft. There are five structures. There's robust. There's, you know, them all zero RB, but building it properly is what matters. You can't just say that you're going to go, you know, zero RB. And then you take one in the fourth round or third round. And then like, I don't know, like it just doesn't make sense to do stuff that way. So if you're going to go zero RB and you take – who's a third-round running back right now? I don't know. Let's just say you go David Montgomery. Well, you're now you've ruined that structure. So now that draft's going to be screwed, right? Because that's when you should be firing at a tight end, a wide receiver, hell, even a quarterback, anything but a running back. You should be strengthening your spot at every single spot, point of your roster. And now you've just shot yourself in the foot. So what is your build at that point? It, it's it's ruined. And now you have to try to recover your team. And it's probably not going to look as good. Because you went to go do something a certain way. And, hey, maybe you auto-drafted. Maybe it wasn't intentional. But now you need to learn how to fix that mistake within the draft. Are you going to stay to the zero RB? Or maybe the play at that point is to just draft the RB in the fifth and sixth round, grab one more at the end, and only have four RBs. It just completely changed the structure you were building. So hopefully that makes sense in what I was trying to discuss there. So right now we have a one, two, five, one build. We have Brady, CMC, Fournette, Evans, Sutton, Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, Christian. Watson, this is going to be a rough night, MVS, and Darren Waller. I would also say that you can't go into a draft with a goal. Well, yeah, you can't because you don't know your draft order, and that's what I was talking about earlier with this one. 
I was hoping to get a seven or eight. So I had a goal in this draft if we picked a certain spot. I wanted to try to show some things that I've been doing from the seven and eight spot if that's what we pulled. But when we pulled the two spot, I automatically know that, yes, I cannot do that specific type of play because I'm leaving too much value on the table. So, yeah, you can't go in with a specific goal, but as soon as you see your draft position, you can get an idea of what you want to do, and then you watch how the draft unfolds, and then you react. Again, it's going into poker. If you go into poker like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play a small ball strategy all night, and then your opponents are playing in a way that negates that strategy, you can't lean into it. You have to adjust for your opponents. To be the better player, you have to always be the one adjusting and figuring out how to play against who you're playing against. So if people are drafting a certain way, attack it. What's the best way? What's the best way to attack that draft? So I just want to see everyone that's on the board right now. we got Pierce. All right. So let's do this. Let's get a little wild. Let's grab Gronk. And we'll just onslaught Tampa. Right? And then I think we're going to grab one more wide receiver. <clears throat> and I should have reversed these, but, you know, we'll take some chances here. Yeah, that's probably well, we're going to take Jamison Williams um, as our sixth wide receiver. That's, I think that's a great spot to grab him. Just the upside that he presents over these other guys. Lazard is fine, but if Williams is our sixth wide receiver and we can wait on him, especially with guys like Evans, Sutton, Smith, Watson, MVS in front, I mean, he becomes a luxury and it's only the 11th round. So, again, you need to play the best way that you can play. And that's by understanding the draft room you're in, watching what everybody's doing, which is tough to do while you're streaming, but trying to see what other people are doing. And you can accumulate this over multiple drafts. Start to see the patterns. Okay, I see that this guy's drafting this particular way. I know that he's going to be looking for these guys here. Maybe I need to grab this one now, right? And that sounds very generic, what I'm saying, but I think if you have a poker, maybe even a chess background, I'm not a chess player, but I would assume that based off the game of chess and it's strategy-based, understanding your opponent is everything. So understanding your opponents is big. Understanding what roster you're building is huge. It's just, to me, construction matters more than anything else. Then you get into your week 17, your week 16, whichever one you prefer, fine. You know, then you're getting into your team stacks, all that other stuff. All of that stuff secondary. Understanding your structure is first. I mean, the, some of those go hand in hand, right? Your structure can go with your team stacks. Peng says it sounds generic, but it's something that gets missed. You can avoid being sniped by looking exactly it's a great point if you understand what other people are doing you can avoid being sniped 100 percent true you can understand when you should be reaching too right so if you're watching the way a draft's going and you're like oh i know that player x usually goes in the 13th round but the way this draft is unfolding he's probably going to go in the 12th maybe late 11th Maybe with the construction I have, the way I'm building my team, it would make a lot of sense for me to grab him in the mid 11th, early 11th. Other people might think it's crazy, but you might, if you're drafting 150 of these teams, if you're drafting 50 of these teams and you look back and you're like, <clears throat> and you're, and let's say it's Will Fuller and he's, and he signed with a team and it makes sense for him to grab him somewhere in the 11th. You're not going to be like, 
oh, I'm glad I have Will Fuller, but I can't believe I had to draft him in the 11th round on this team. A, you're not going to remember that, probably, most likely, unless it's your only share of Will Fuller. And B, who cares? If he's doing what he's supposed to do for your team and he made your team make sense and now he's doing great, what, what do we care where we drafted him? You know, again, we don't want to leave val val value on the table, but all right. So here's where things start to get a little bit interesting in this draft. We have two RBs. I think I want to grab one more that I like, and that's Daryl Henderson. I think he's falling a little bit too far in some of these drafts, and we saw what he's capable of doing if he gets the workload. And who's to say Cam Akers is going to be 100% all year? So I like Henderson. Let's take a look at our quarterbacks and see what we want to set up here. Um, hmm. I should have been paying more attention. All right. Let's do one more wideout. Let's grab Pickens from Pittsburgh because that could set something up later if we need to. But we should be looking at another quarterback at some point probably. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, if you're getting the results you want from the guys that you're drafting, why, why do you care where you pick them? You know, and I'm not saying like to get silly with it. You know, let's, you're not going to draft Will Fuller in the first and be like, you know, I'm happy I drafted Will Fuller in the first. I could have had Christian McCaffrey. You know, I know McCaffrey's not hurt and he's crushing, but so is Will Fuller. No, it's it's more of those like couple round value deviations, right? So <clears throat> I think there's plenty of third rounders that could be first rounders. If you took a stand on Cooper Cup last year and you're like, I'm drafting him in the third because I want him every draft or <clears throat> maybe not even every draft, but a majority, how happy are you with all the money you made last year? You know, the flip side's Robert Woods. Like if you do a Robert Woods, you were screwed. But you got to you gotta take these chances. You got to be different. I saw Juju at pick 22. How do you feel about that? I mean, all the power to you. Again, I, I work in tiers. I have like a mental tier list of guys, and Juju is not jumping over those guys at 23. Um, So, you know, do your thing. But if you're going to draft Juju in the second round, then please make sure I'm in all your drafts, I guess. I think that's getting a little – starting to get a little crazy. I think his price is already like – at its peak in the sixth round. And it's all about what you value your guys, too. I don't value Juju up in that range. Where, like, I value A.J. Brown as a potential first-round pick. Like, first-round value, I'll say. Not first-round pick. A.J. Brown could be first-round value. Mike Evans could be first-round value. They've shown reasons why they could be. Javante Williams could be first-round value. So... That's like my poster of sticking to this point is, so if I got Williams, Evans, A.J. Brown as my start, I'm like, I have three guys with potential first-round upside. Love it. Oh, and maybe, you know, 50 other people in the entire best ball mania have it, if I could get it, or 50 other people, 100 other people have it in the DraftKings draft. Awesome. Versus like a three-man start that – you know, 2,000 other people have, you know, I'll, I'll take it all day. Um, comment is Damian Harris is my guy at ADP 90. So I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out clearly. I don't think I have my helmet showing, but you know, I usually have three Patriots helmets showing to my right here. Um, Patriots guy, I'm more of a fantasy guy at this point in my life, but if I have teams that I'm a fan of, it's the Patriots, it's the Eagles. So I live in New England. I follow the Patriots. I don't understand what's happening with that backfield right now. So I'm grabbing Debian Harris, but I'm nervous about it, to be completely honest with you. 
So let's see what's sticking around over here at quarterback. All right. I have an idea of what I want to do at quarterback here. We're going to push quarterback a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big Mostert guy right now, by the way. Really do like Mostert. I love Osborne, though. Osborne is who we're going to grab right now. But I love K.J. Osborne as the third wide receiver on the Vikings. Let's just look at his stats from last year. He had 50 receptions on 82 targets, 655 yards, and one, and seven touchdowns as the third wide receiver. Now, Thielen got hurt a little bit, but I think Osborne showed that he can step in and be that number two at a high, efficient level. So Osborne is a guy that I have been targeting in the back end of these drafts. So, you know, let's do what I'm talking about. I think the absolute, I can't believe I'm going to say this name. It's going to hurt my soul. But I think the best pick for my team right now is to get Jared Goff with my Jameson Williams stack here. So grabbing him a few rounds ahead. The only other thing I'd be looking at here that is of immense value would be Mostert or Herbert, and I know they're not going to make it back to me now. But for the stack that I want with the quarterbacks that are remaining, I think grabbing Goff a round and a half-ish above ADP is fine. And there's running backs that I like in the back end of the draft that I can grab. And we've already got McCaffrey, Fournette, Henderson. And we've got three more picks. I'm fine with taking let, – like, let's go through our team real quick because I want to emphasize our wide receivers. We have Brady and Goff. We have CMC, Fournette, Henderson. We have Evans, Sutton, Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, MVS, Jamison Williams, George Pickens, and KJ Osborne. And we have Waller and Gronk as our tight end. I think our wide receivers are pretty damn solid. And Osborne is usually a, a cut. Well, maybe not a tear break for me because Odell's still there. Julio. You know, I like Mechie. I also really like Nico Collins towards this back end when I'm drafting in this area. But Nico might be my tear break here. And then I think it gets really ugly with these guys right here. So, Best Ball Moderate says, KJ could disappoint like Alabisi. Of course he could. I think that's why he's a 15-round pick. He could absolutely disappoint. But the upside for a 15th-round pick with great contingent value, you know, buzzwords for Best Ball, contingent value, Thielen's getting older. If Thielen gets hurt, or hell, if Justin Jefferson gets hurt, not something we want to see. We don't want to see either guy get hurt. I'm not a like injury stan here. But if either one of those guys goes down, like the routes run for him is gonna go through the roof. And we know Kirk, I mean, say what you want about Kirk Cousins, not our favorite quarterback, but he can get these receivers the ball enough. So of the third wide receivers in the league, he's up there for me. Like, he's clearly the third, right? And his value is there. And we know what his upside is. Don't be shocked if you start to see him creep up to the 13th round by the time drafting's done in August. You know, you start getting some camp buzz about him. They saying that they want to give Thielen a little bit of, you know, a break or something. Um, KJ Osborne could definitely shoot up the draft board. So we have this two, three, eight, two build right now. We have Brady and Goff as our quarterbacks. I'm not opposed to making this a real weird build. We have three picks left. Um, 
I think I want to either go three QBs. I think I want to go three QBs. And I think I want to go five RBs. So let's take a look at our RBs real quick. And I think... Hmm. So I think we're going to go... We're going to go Haskins here. Just purely based on hoping he's the backup for Derrick Henry. I was looking at McKissick because I still think McKissick is a really good running back, but we know that his workload, if if Gibson goes down or something, isn't going to increase greatly. They're probably going to be playing Brian Robinson Jr., and McKissick's role just doesn't change at all, or it's a minimal change. Let's look at our quarterbacks. Um, is there anyone that makes sense? And I think it makes sense to grab Pickett here. So we're going to grab Kenny Pickett, and we're going to push our last running back to the last round. There's a guy like in the 18th, uh, if you're drafting and you've drafted with me before, you know who it is, and I'm just smashing him in the 18th when it makes sense. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll run through our team, and we'll get you guys out of here. Uh, any questions before we get to our last pick about the layout of this team? We went Brady, Goff, Kenny Pickett. We grab Pickett because we have George Pickens, which is going to be the toughest thing to say all year when we throw him touchdown passes to him. So Brady, Goff, Pickett. We have McCaffrey, Fournette, Henderson, Haskins, Mike Evans, Cortland Sutton, Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Jamison Williams, George Pickens, KJ Osborne, Darren Waller, and Gronk. We could have gone three tight ends here because Gronk is, you know, on the fence. I'm pretty sure he's coming back. But worst case scenario, our one tight end is Darren Waller. I mean, I guess I'll take it. It's not the worst one tight end to have if you're going to only end up with one tight end. And where I don't have a mobile quarterback, which is this might actually be my first draft without a mobile quarterback. Um, I like having that third one just to try to hit more of a 20-point floor. So, yeah, this was the point I was just making, Terrence. Don't want to do a third tight end in case Gronk retires. I'm playing chicken with that. It was either a third quarterback or a third tight end. Um, we still could if the running backs don't make too much sense with what's left. Julio in the end of the 17th, huh? Hate to see it. He signs with literally any team, and that jumps up four rounds. I, it's just one of the reasons he's probably my most owned player. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, in case Gronk retires, I think he's coming back. Just dealing with Gronk for 10 years now, can kind of read what he's going to do. Feels like he's coming back. Um but yeah, I mean, it's it wouldn't hurt to have a third tight end, and I just and I think if I had a different quarterback other than Brady Goff, if I had like found a way to get Brady Russ, obviously, Dolchin or Harrison Bryant, sneaky good. Um, I also like taking Trey McBride to be honest. When I'm firing that third tight end. Just because I know how old or oh, you know who else is a great tight end to take? We might take him. We'll see. Especially in the 18th round. Oh, McKissick has fallen. What are you guys doing here? Why is McKissick still on the board? I mean, I want to take I want to take Dearness Johnson, but if you're gonna give me McKissick in the 18th, I think I'm just gonna smash him. All right, I'll take him. Um Let's not sleep on Taysom Hill in the 18th round as a tight end. Do you think this dude's only going to line up as a tight end? Right? So if you're doing a three tight end build or you want to really push that second tight end, I don't know why he's going to line up as a running back sometimes. He's going to line up all over the field. He's going to line up as a quarterback on occasion. 
they're not going to completely take that out of the out of the playbook. So Taysom Hill's a guy that if he's my third tight end or the tight end that I'm pushing, I'm just like, yes, please give me Taysom Hill. And I don't even like the Saints' offense, but just the just the skill set that he possesses, and I would have got him, you know, second to last pick if I wanted him. So you're getting him for free. So any more questions, throw them out there. We'll go over the team one more time if anyone wants to look at their team if they were in the draft. I know this filled kind of fast, so we might not have got a lot of the chat in. But we can uh, we can take a look at your team, and I will roast it, and you will get banned for a week if I think your team sucks. So just remember that. So we got Tom Brady, Jared Goff, Kenny Pickett at quarterback. We got McCaffrey, Fournette, Henderson, Haskins, J.D. McKissick. We got a full Tampa onslaught. Remember, we got we got a player at each position. Wide receivers are Evans, Cortland Sutton, Devonta Smith, Christian Watson, Christian Watson, MVS, Jamison Williams, George Pickens, K.J. Osborne, Darren Waller, and Gronk. And we are stacked on each quarterback. Brady, of course, has everybody. Jared Goff, I have Jamison Williams, and then Kenny Pickett, we got um, George Pickens. So, you know, sneaky third stack there with Pittsburgh. Um, I know I keep talking about the giveaway. I did create the Google Doc for it. I didn't have time to pull it up to put it on the thing. We're going to do the drawing maybe in two weeks. Maybe I want to throw it on the YouTube stream next week. Um, but I will throw it in the Discord tomorrow. I have a full day of working on Spike Week stuff tomorrow, so I will make it a point to throw it in the Discord in the general section. So make sure you're part of the Discord. Uh, the rules for that, obviously, are to be subscribed to Spike Week, be subscribed to Hometown Ghost Stories. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I don't see... Which team do you think is the strongest besides yours? Um... I don't know if I have time to go through every single team, but let's look through some. We got a four QB build here with Watson, Tannehill, Wentz, Locke, Taylor, sorry, I can't name every player as we go. I don't think that's a bad way to do a four quarterback build from Jack. Um, Tato has Lance, so we're already not going to look at it because you know how I feel about Lance. We got Burrow and Tua for Russell with Chubb, Barkley, ETN. Oh, this team's pretty fun. He really drops at his wide receivers, though. Mm. He's really strong at RB. Hopkins is probably not the number two wide receiver you want if your drop is going to be from Hopkins to Alave. I... I don't know. I, I don't hate this build, but I think I'd want somebody else other than Hopkins. But I like the idea of this build, if that makes sense. Um, so we got Hertz, Eckler, Elliott, Tyree, Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson, Gage. This team's decent. This definitely feels like a middle-of-the-road team, though. Um, don't hate it, though. Ginger. We got the Aaron Rodgers, the Aaron Jones stack. Uh, he's got Jacobs. He's got Stevenson. Do you need six? Do you need Algier, Hines? Do you need Dante Foreman? Wide receivers are Jefferson, Cooper, Judy. Do you have Cousins? Oh, that's a good double stack. This team's good. Um, with three tight ends too, huh? Maybe I'd want another receiver here somewhere. Um, he's double stacking both his quarterbacks. Ginger's got a pretty good team. I think, I think we lose a running back here somewhere though. And we get another wide receiver. I mean, the wide receivers aren't bad, but I think he's just one, two, four. So he's only playing seven wideouts. Yeah. I think this is my favorite other team right, right now would be Ginger's. Um, but I think he needed to get one more wide out. Let's look at one more. Uh, let's get this one. A 2682 build. Kyler and Dak. Pollard, Singletary, Isaiah Spiller, Rashard White, Taryn Davis Price, Marlon Mack. Oh, this is this team's good. Devontae Adams, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Pittman, Hollywood Brown, Brandon Cooks, AJ Green, Julio Jones, James Washington, 
Ertz and Njoku, I'm not big on Ertz. I know other people are talking him up this year. Uh, I don't know. I'm still fighting with the Arizona Cardinals, to be honest with you. I'll have a better take on them soon. I'm I'm back and forth on them right now, on what I expect from them. Njoku is interesting, but you could be you know, really screwed at the tight end position. But other than that, I do like the way this team is built. All right, guys, I am going to get out of here. Um, I know Eric doesn't like to do this, but like and subscribe. I ask you to do it because it might help someone else that likes best ball find us and be part of the community. So the more eyes we get on us, the more people that we can interact with and have these discussions in the Discord, on the stream, and just like talk to each other about them all. Other than that, I am going to plug my show for tonight. Hometown Ghost Stories, 9 p.m. Uh, it's a story. It's an episode that I'm narrating, and it has a sports vibe on it. It talks about a haunted hotel that NBA players are terrified to stay in. So if you're interested in that, join me at Hometown Ghost Stories tonight at 9. Other than that, guys, it has been an absolute blast. I love doing this every week. I really enjoy talking to you guys. But we will see you next week, and look out for that video. Like I said, that's coming out soon. Peace. Thank you.